everyone and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a catch up where I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in February and March of this year. First off I just want to apologise for the lack of videos in the last month or so. I feel like I've just been so busy the last couple of months and I also feel like my days off I've been spending a lot of time like with my friends and family and just trying to have some time to properly relax rather than like stressing about filming and editing but I was also a little bit ill for a week and I've also been on holiday so that's another reason why I wasn't filming. Uh, we went to Italy for three days, we went to Milan, Venice and Lake Como and it was amazing. So yeah, that's kind of why I've been a little bit absent. So let's just start with the first book that I read in March and that was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So I listened to this one on audio and I would really recommend listening to it on audio if you want to read it. I'm sure that a lot of you have probably already heard of or read this book before but basically it's about a fictional band called Daisy Jones and the Six and it's basically told in interview format and the audiobook's really good because everyone has a different voice actor. It just kind of fits the audiobook format because it kind of feels like a documentary. So I really enjoyed this book and I've given it four out of five stars. So the first thing I'll say is that it does feel very realistic. It's easy to forget that this isn't a real band and I do think that it's based on or perhaps inspired by Fleetwood Mac. It does feel like you're watching this like insider documentary into a real band and it was just really fun to listen to. I liked seeing all the relationships between the band members. My favourite is obviously sort of Billy, Daisy and Billy's wife Camilla. I loved how all of that ended as well. I thought it was done really well. And yeah, by the time I was like three quarters of the way through, it felt like no time had passed at all. And I was really surprised to be near the end because yeah, it was just really easy listening, very enjoyable. But it did also touch on some heavier topics such as drug addiction and living that sort of rock and roll lifestyle and having it catch up with you. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. I have also read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I think I gave it like a three star, three and a half. I didn't like that as much as Daisy Jones and the Six. But yeah, I think I'm probably not going to read any more from this author at the minute. I just don't really have any plans to, but if she comes out with anything else, then maybe I'll have a look. The next book that I read, I read on my Kindle and that was Good Neighbours by Sarah Langan. So this book is a little bit hard to explain, but it's kind of a fiction horror story about suburban paranoia and about the lengths that people will go to when they're kind of influenced by this mob mentality pressure. So we're basically following a few different characters who live in this very small close-knit neighbourhood and there's a few different families and they've got this sort of hierarchy where one of them is like the Queen Bee family and then we've got this other family that are sort of looked down on by the rest of them because they're outsiders, they're not as prim and proper as everybody else so yeah we've got all those sorts of tensions there but then a sinkhole basically appears in the neighbourhood one day and then this really tragic thing happens and everyone just starts going a little bit crazy. People are spreading rumours, really harmful rumours and it also had quite a lot of like disturbing elements in there. There's quite a few trigger warnings so if you're sensitive to anything then I would maybe look that up because it does go a lot darker than I was expecting. I feel like this should have worked for me a little bit more than it did because the suburban paranoia mixed with this sort of horror of a natural sinkhole appearing. Everyone kind of questioning whether the sinkhole was having an effect on people because it started having an effect on like the communications and like the mobile phones and stuff. I thought that all of that combined would really work for me. But I think the writing style was a little bit odd. Like some of it was a little bit flowery and a little bit over the top. And I also feel like I struggled to picture some of the actual scenes and like what was happening. I don't know, I ended up giving it a three star because I liked it but I did have quite high hopes for it and I thought it would get a higher rating but it did get me quite heated so I obviously cared about the characters because yeah some of it is quite frustrating to read <laughs> but I don't really know who I would recommend this to. Maybe someone who likes kind of a character focused social horror maybe you like this one maybe have a look into it because yeah I thought I would like it more than I did it sounds really good but something about it just didn't. 
didn't fully work. The next book that I read was actually a five star read and that was A Short Stay in Hell by Stephen L. Peck. This is a horror novella which is basically about a guy who dies at the start of the book and he's been a devoted Mormon for his entire life so he's very surprised when he realises that he's actually died and gone to hell and he quickly learns that basically the religion that he believed in wasn't the true religion and anyone who didn't believe in this religion which I've never actually heard of, I don't know if it's real or not, but basically everyone that has died that doesn't believe in that religion has woken up in hell and it starts off with this kind of satirical version of hell and they basically assign each person a specific version of hell that kind of matches their personality and they basically send him to a library that holds every book that could possibly be written in the universe and his job is to find the book that tells his life story and as soon as he finds that book he will go to heaven. I don't really know what it was about this book but I just absolutely loved it and I could not stop reading it. I loved the writing style, I was just absolutely addicted. I really liked our main character and I felt so connected with him and we basically follow this character over quite a long time so you get to see how the sort of societal structure changes and it just gave me like the biggest feeling of existential dread ever. <laughs> I think because when you think about how large a task that is, as in to find this one specific book in a library that is just inconceivably big, just like a mammoth task that is pretty much impossible. So to sort of put myself in those shoes just really really freaked me out and some of the conversations in this book like about that and how people are struggling. It's just one of my favourite kinds of horror, just this very real horror, this overwhelming sense of dread. Just reading about a concept that if you think about too much is just kind of overwhelming. <laughs> it's such a simple idea but I think he pulled it off so well. I feel like I could have read on and on about all the different kind of groups that existed in this place and all the relationships that he had. I was just so invested even though it was so short. I cared about all the different people in this book and it gets to a certain point where there's like a kind of reveal that happens and I felt my stomach drop like I was just so I felt like I was there and I couldn't stop thinking about it for days after I was telling everyone about it so yeah I will now tell you to read it so if you're into horror novellas kind of a not a social horror but it's not like a scary you know there's monsters in it it kind of reminded me a bit of I Who Have Never Known Men even though I gave that one a three star I feel like it's the same sort of feeling so I think if you liked that book then you might like this one. Okay it's finally time to talk about House of Leaves. I have been putting this off for a while. I did mention it in my last video where I said that I had finished it technically in January but then I wanted to reread it and like annotate it just to get a further grasp on it and I ended up doing that about six weeks after my first read so it took me a while to get through it the second time and uh, I don't know I don't know if it was worth it to be honest. I'll start off by explaining what this book is which is a task in itself but I will do my best. House of Leaves in its purest form is a collection of writings by a guy called Zampano and at the start of the book Zampano has just died and a guy called Johnny has taken all of these writings from Zampano's flat and his aim is to kind of compile them into a legible format because they're all just a bit of a mess and it doesn't really make much sense. But essentially what Zampano was writing about was an academic review of a found footage series which was called the Navidson Record. I want to say Navidson Record but I'm pretty sure it's Navidson. But I'm going to say Navidson just because with my accent it's easier for me to say. So the Navidson record is a series of found footage videos filmed by Navidson in his own house when a mysterious corridor sort of appears that he's never seen before. The external house doesn't actually show it and it's freezing cold, it's dark and it seems to be never ending and it shifts and changes when people go inside. There's this question whether it's a hoax and if it's like faked or is it actually true. So then Zampano is writing an academic review of the Navidson record as a whole. Johnny is then compiling all of this information together and is putting in his own footnotes on top of Zampano's footnotes. And then we've got another layer where we've got an editor who's reviewing everything so Johnny's stuff, Zampano's stuff 
and is adding their own footnotes as well. It's very confusing, but basically it's laid out with like different fonts. Like this stuff is all Zampano's and then it slightly changes for Johnny's footnotes, which go on for pages and pages and pages. Some pages that are laid out like this and they're just kind of confusing to read. There's some that just have loads of white space, which oh, were my favorites. <laughs> and then there's like glossaries, appendixes, poems. It's just a big mix of everything. So it's very clever for a start. I don't know how this author sort of compiled all this together, especially as a debut. Like I imagine him trying to pitch this to publishers and agents and them just being like, what the hell are you talking about? My final rating is unfortunately a three star. And I say unfortunately because the amount of hours and the effort that I've like put into this book, <laughs> um, only for me to feel kind of lukewarm about it after, is just a little bit disappointing but I have a lot of thoughts so obviously you can see that I've tabbed quite a lot of it here so I had tabs for Zampano, for the Navidson family, for Johnny, for the Navidson record and the house and then I also had separate tabs for the appendix so that I could flick to that really quickly. I only added the annotations and the tabs on my second read which I feel like made more sense to me because the second read just kind of brought it all together in a way but the first read through I know quite a lot of people like discuss this and like how best to read it but I did literally read it how it's written so I would read it and then when it got to a footnote I would start reading the footnote and then I'd go back to um where I was so even if the footnote went on for like three pages I would read the footnote and then go back to where I was and then on my second read through it kind of depended so if I was like in the flow of Zampano's stuff and there was a footnote for Johnny then I would just like get to the end of Zampano's and then I would go to Johnny but I do think you get kind of the best out of it by just reading it how it's meant to be written because the whole point of this is that it's very maze-like and it feels like a labyrinth because that's what the house is like so when things are happening inside the house that feel more claustrophobic and more like you're getting lost that's kind of when the book mirrors that as in like you're flicking back and forth to different pages and you just feel like you're completely lost and I feel like that is very clever that it kind of mirrors that and then when things are more fast paced you get these sections that are just like very very quick. I wish I'd found this a little bit scarier than it was. I think that would have boosted my rating a bit and I also feel like I'm a bit too dumb for this. <laughs> like it's quite a pretentious book and I can't decide if it's like a satire on academic reviews. I mean some of it is I think but then is it also really clever and I'm missing a lot? Like I expected in my second read through to kind of pick up on a lot more things and to make a lot more connections than I did but I don't really feel like the second read through gave me a lot more insight into what was going on. It just kind of reinforced what I already knew from the first read if that makes sense. I did do an obligatory deep dive on the internet and like reddit theories and stuff and to be honest some of them I just thought were a bit ridiculous and it does make me wonder if the author intentionally did things to like create all these theories or if they're just like really convoluted and he's a bit like where have you got that from? <laughs> I was excited at first to read what people were thinking but I feel like it got kind of old quickly. Just not having like the actual answers as to what things meant was kind of frustrating. Like there's some poems near the end. I still don't know what the poems mean even after like looking it up. My favourite part of the book is the Wales Toll letters. So basically there's another section at the end of the book which is Johnny's mum's letters to him. And at some point in the book it kind of says oh if you want to learn more about Johnny like skip to this bit and I did and I read the whole thing and it's quite a long section to be fair. There was some of it that needed like decoding um, and like a hidden message in them so I really loved that part. I think that was my favourite and it did add a lot to Johnny's character. So I don't know I can't say that I was ever bored reading it. I can say that I was frustrated which is the point but I did read it the first time very quickly within like two weeks which is quite surprising for like a book of this length it's like 700 pages long but yeah then the second read it took a lot longer and I just I feel like I wasn't as invested and then to get to the end and be like oh okay that was fine <laughs> it was just a bit frustrating but I'm very glad to have read it it's been on my tbr for a long time I think if you want to read this you really have to put the work in it's very easy to skip parts that are a bit like waffly and I tried not to do that but it is very tempting. So it's a bit of a strange one, I'm not entirely sure what to think about it other than like I'm impressed but I thought I'd be more impressed. Like I thought this book would be like life-changing with all the like hidden theories and how clever it is and yeah it's clever 
but I was just expecting a little bit more from it. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know if you've read this book and what your thoughts were because I feel like it's such a divisive book. Like some people love it, some people hate it. But yeah, if you're like me, you've kind of in between where I can like appreciate what it's doing. But it just wasn't for me in its entirety, I don't think. But yeah, it definitely had some standout bits. Another part that I really liked was when it talks about like the Minotaur and the Labyrinth and how all those parts are crossed out very suspicious so yeah that's all my thoughts if you have any more questions about it just ask me um i feel like it would be such a good one for like a book club if i mean to get people to read this for a book club is kind of intense but i do think it could bring like a lot of discussion so yeah that's my thoughts on house of leaves and the next one that I read, well, I think I read this kind of in between my first read and my second read because I just needed a thriller, like a palate cleanser. So I read Just Another Missing Person by Gillian McAllister. And I think I'm settling on like a two and a half star for this, but I've rounded it up to a three on Goodreads. This is basically about a female. I think she's a detective chief inspector and she's basically been tasked with looking for this missing person but then she starts getting threats that she needs to frame a specific person or some big secret within her family will come to light which means that she would like potentially lose her job potentially go to prison and her family member might as well so it's got that corruption blackmail side which i'm not usually a fan of but i found it quite interesting in this when it's coming from the perspective of a police officer and whether they're actually going to go ahead with it. So it kind of reminded me of Line of Duty in that way. But I did find it a little bit unrealistic, as in our main girl is meant to be quite high up in the police and she just felt way too involved with the missing person investigation. Like, I can't imagine someone of her rank sort of reviewing CCTV. Do you know what I mean? I feel like Gillian McAllister maybe put her in a bit too high of a rank for what she kind of wanted the book to do because really I think she could have done with having her be a bit lower rank and it make more sense for her to be so involved. I don't feel like it really hooked me in at any point and although it still had the same sort of family dynamic that she had in her other book, Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which I really liked, I just feel like I didn't connect to this family as much as I did her other book. There is quite a big twist in this book and I wasn't sure I loved it because it kind of put a new perspective on what we'd already read and yeah it just left me feeling a little bit confused with the timeline and like what was happening so I didn't love that and then I wasn't the biggest fan of the explanation as to what was going on and who was behind it and to be honest I've kind of forgotten quite a lot of it but I do remember being a little bit disappointed with how it ended and I didn't really agree with the direction that it went in. It wasn't a bad book and I will probably read more from this author in the future. It had like decent pacing and stuff but yeah there were just too many things that I didn't really like about it so yeah I've given it a two and a half round it up to a three on Goodreads because yeah there's nothing wrong with it just not my fave. Next up we have Magma not gonna pronounce this author's name because I have no idea how to say it I'm really sorry but I believe it's an Icelandic author so I'll put her name on the screen here but basically this is kind of similar to In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado which I read in January of this year and I gave it five stars. So it's another story basically focusing on a toxic abusive relationship and it's told in these little vignettes so it's a very short book very quick to get through but in this case I ended up giving it three stars stars it was well written and I think it had some really good quotes in it but for the most part I felt kind of on the periphery of this relationship so our main character is a young student and she's in a relationship with this guy who just treats her really badly he's like a massive red flag and I feel like it's very clear to the reader that he is a shitty guy but our main character kind of lets him walk all over her because she's very infatuated by him and I kind of wish that we were let into that side of it a bit more because as the reader I didn't really understand why she felt this way about this guy when all we kind of saw was the red flags and him treating her really badly. I think if she balanced it with like how they met, how they fell in love, the things that she perceived to be good about the relationship then I felt like I would have understood it a bit more but because we were just getting this constant like bad treatment I just felt like I didn't really resonate with the character and I didn't really understand why she was still with him <laughs> but I think if you're after a book that is about this kind of topic then I would say that In the Dream House is like a better version of it. It was just so relatable and I felt so connected with that character whereas with Magma I just felt very sort of 
distance from her and I just didn't really understand her. So I've given it three stars just because it's not a bad book and I did like parts of it. It just didn't have that emotional impact that I was hoping for with it. The next book that I read is called Out There by Kate Fork and this is a short story collection which is kind of speculative kind of horror stories and I've given it four out of five stars. I really really enjoyed it actually. My favourite ones were Out There and Big Sur which are the first and the last story and they kind of interconnect. So those two kind of focus on the idea that there are these AI bots that kind of trick women into dating them and their goal is basically to con them and steal their money. I also love The Bone Ward which was about a group of people who had this very odd disease where their bones would basically kind of melt at night so they had to be in these like anti-gravity pods so that they didn't just disintegrate um, and that was really really interesting and I love the ending of that one. I also really love Doe Eyes which is about a woman who kind of wants to be shot. <laughs> um, she starts like running in the woods pretending to be a deer so that she gets shot. Very strange but I really liked that one as well. As with all collections there were a few that I just thought were okay but there wasn't really any that I didn't like but I loved how a lot of the stories felt very feminine, they were told from female perspectives and even if I didn't love the stories themselves I really loved every sort of concept and I would definitely read more from this author in the future. The next book that I read is quite a new one for me. I think it's a 2024 release and it's Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Kavanagh. I just really wanted a good fast paced thriller and I'd seen quite a few people read this and say that it was like one of their favourite ones that they've read this year. So I picked it up on my Kindle and I've given it four stars. I did really enjoy it to be fair. It is very fast paced. There's lots of short chapters. You follow different perspectives in different timelines and you're not entirely sure how they're going to tie together. There was a lot of suspense, lots of tension, especially there were some scenes where one of our main characters is in a house and she's like sneaking around and those scenes were so good. I felt like I was holding my breath the whole time. They were just like really exciting and I feel like I've not been excited by a thriller in a long time so yeah I thought it was really good however there was one moment at the end which I found very cringy I think I actually laughed out loud like it was that cringe and I can't fully remember how it finished but I think I read it when I was a bit ill so it was probably a bit like a fever dream but yeah in terms of like a fast-paced twisty thriller this is definitely one of the better ones that I've read recently and I would recommend it if you're sort of feeling a bit stuck with thrillers like the rest of us seem to be I feel like I'm whizzing through these last ones really quick but it's because I've been filming for like an hour <laughs> and I definitely don't want the video to be that long it's probably because I was talking about House of Leaves for about 15 minutes but the last book that I read in March was The Witnesses Are Gone by Joel Lane and unfortunately I didn't like this book I've given it two stars which is also doubly sad because I bought this one like full price on Amazon which isn't like me so to not like it is quite disappointing but this one is basically about a guy who moves into an old house and he starts rummaging around the shed and he finds this weird disturbing film by this obscure French director he watches it and then he kind of becomes obsessed but it doesn't feel like he's obsessed like it, I feel like it's such a mild interest like it doesn't come across as he's obsessed like it doesn't feel unhinged but then he starts like traveling to different parts of the world to try and like trace this guy and I just found it so boring I think it was a bit too like artsy for me because a lot of it is him talking about cinema I think I was expecting more of a found footage horror situation where it was more of like an artsy independent film and he just gets like oddly interested in it and it's only a short book I think it's like 80 pages and he travels to like Paris, Mexico, Scotland. It just all happens a little bit too fast. And I didn't care about the characters. I didn't care about his obsession. He just keeps like taking drugs and not really doing much. I almost DNF'd it because I was just like, I don't get it. And I thought it also mentioned politics quite a lot, which I didn't really understand why it was sort of in the book. It's not what I expected it to be. And I don't know if that's a me thing or the book. I feel like a lot of people quite like this one from looking at Goodreads reviews but it just wasn't for me it wasn't the kind of horror that I like and I'm just not interested in French cinema apparently so unfortunately this is going to be a two star I was tempted to give it one because I just really didn't enjoy it at all but I usually don't give books a one star unless they're like really problematic or like just really bad writing which I don't think this is I'm probably going to be selling this or giving it away or something so if you want it let me know and I'll send it you. <laughs> so yeah that's all the books that I read in February and March. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you've been reading or if you've read any of these books or if you now want to. Hopefully I'm going to feel a little bit more in the swing of things now 
and I'll be back to posting videos like once every two weeks. So let me know any other video ideas that you want to see from me in the future. But for now, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see more and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!